Yuzu is an experimental open source emulator for the Nintendo Switch, from the creators of Citra, which is the Wii U emulator if you don't know. Although the emulator is quite new, since the Nintendo Switch is still relatively new, it isn't a perfect emulator like Dolphin, but I was shocked to see how well it can play some games. Interestingly enough, the developers of the emulator are making it work on Linux as well as Windows, however this tutorial will be on the Windows 10 version. Before I lead you on, you should know not every game works on the Yuzu emulator, and some games don't work well. I highly recommend looking at the list linked in the description to see what games are compatible before investing any time into working this emulator. In a similar fashion, you have to have a certain type of computer to run this, but lucky for us, the requirements are much lower than a demanding emulator like the RPCS3 emulator. From the official Yuzu website, they essentially recommend a relatively new 4-core CPU that came out within the past 5 years or so, and about a mid-range graphics card like the GTX 1650. However, they do say some integrated graphics and lower-end graphics cards should work. Finally, you should have at least 8GB of RAM, but I found the emulator uses a decent chunk of my RAM, so more the better. To install go to yuzu-emu.org, and on the front page there's a download link. Click it to go to the download page. To begin, you must have Visual Studio C++ 2019 installed on your computer. So if you don't have it, just download it and install it. It only takes a few clicks and a minute. After that it's installed, at the bottom of the page, there's a green download button that says Download for Windows at 64. Click that to download the install. When you open the .exe file, you'll be asked which version of Yuzu you want to install. If you wish, you can subscribe to the Patreon for $5 a month and get early release builds of the emulator that has some unreleased features and probably runs a little better. However, I'll be installing the normal version, but installing both should be the same. You just have to log in to install the early release version. You can also choose if you want a desktop icon, or if not, just click install in the bottom right. It will download the actual files of the emulator and install it. After it's done, you can just click exit and it will open the emulator. When it opens for the first time, it will give you two prompts. One telling you you need to have keys for your Nintendo Switch, and the other one asking you to collect anonymous data to help improve Yuzu. Doesn't matter what you choose, but I chose yes. The legal and correct way to get your keys is to dump them from your own Nintendo Switch. Yuzu has a brilliant step-by-step -step guide on this on their quick start guide, linked in the description. I've also found if you search and google Yuzu keys, you can find product and title keys relatively easy. However, this is legally questionable. With keys on your computer, click file in the top left of the emulator, click Yuzu folder, then you will create a folder in here called keys. You will simply click and drag your product and title keys into the folder. At this point, the keys should be installed, but you will need to exit and reopen the Yuzu application so the emulator or can recognize them. If you don't get a pop-up asking you to install your keys, you know it won't. Now, let's look at some settings we can change for the emulator. To go to the settings, simply go to the top left, go to emulation, and then configuration. There are a lot of different settings you can change here, such as changing the time and date for games like Animal Crossing, to changing the emulator's hotkey so you can have a button to pause or continue the emulation. You can safely change most of these settings as most of them are personalization options, but there are a few settings that have a direct effect on your performance. One is the CPU's accuracy. If you have a much older processor, you can try to turn on the unsafe accuracy in the CPU tab, which may increase performance by a lot. However, this is only necessary if you have a really old CPU. I kept mine on accurate. The setting that is most important is the graphics set. For Yuzu, AMD and Nvidia graphics card both work, but they need different APIs. If you have an AMD graphics card, turn on the Vulkan API in the graphics tab, and then go to the advanced tab and turn off vSync and assembly shapes, as these settings only work with OpenGL. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, do the opposite. Make sure you use OpenGL and keep vSync and assembly shaders on. The last stop in the configuration menu is the controller setup. Much like other emulators, you can essentially bind the default switch control buttons to any type of controller you want, from the PlayStation to mouse and keyboard. Just make sure the controller slot's enabled with the green box. I chose the Pro Controller for the games I wanted to play, and then select the device you wanted to use. When I used my generic headset's controller, the buttons will automatically bind it for me. But it isn't that hard to go and make sure all the buttons correspond to the buttons on your control. As previously hinted at, the only legal and correct way to get your games on your computer is from dumping them from your real Nintendo Switch. Again, guide in description. However, there are some game files on the internet that you can questionably download. All of these games are relatively new and large, so I found it can be hard to find them. But if you look hard enough, you'll find them somewhere. I'm sure of it. Make sure what you're downloading is a SCI file, and be careful what sites you go on, as I'm sure many of them can be malicious. But that's the 
cost of not dumping your games illegally. Once you have your games, I recommend making a folder called User Games and placing them all in there for organizational purposes. Then in your emulator, just double click the bid plus in the middle and find the folder you just made. And there you go. You have completed all the steps to install User. You can now just double click a game and it will open and you can play. Now for a couple extra things I wanted to mention in the video. If you wanted to play your games in full screen, all you have to do is go to the view tab and press full screen option, or simply press F11 and the game will be in full screen. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that you can actually install mods for your games. Some games don't run well, however people in the user community have made mods to help relieve some of the problems. For example, in Link's Awakening, the blur doesn't render correctly, so there's a mod that removes it all together, making the game playable. Installing mods is relatively easy too. All you have to do is download the mod, there's a larger list on the user website with supported mods, which the link's in the description, then right click the game in the emulator and click open mod data location. Just move the mod to the file location it should just work. Just to make sure you can right click the game again and go to properties and see that the patch or the mods installed. And there you have it. Now we are finally done with the tutorial. <laughs> Remember user is a highly experimental, not everything will work, and less things will work perfectly. However user is quite an accomplishment for the emulation community, considering the short time span it's been out and how good it is already, so be patient and try to work out your problems. There are many people that will help you on the official user discord, linked in the description as well. I hope you guys have fun playing the Nintendo Switch on your computer. Thank you guys for watching till the end. If you had this video, you know, let me know. If you didn't, also let me know. If you want something else, let me know. If you want more of this, let me know. Thank you guys.